Broadcasting live, live and around the world. Around the world. From Cabana One, the only podcast that's all ball bearings. Your ultimate source for everything Fletch. Moon River. Whew. Thank you, Doc. You ever serve time? Laker Jim and his beat reporters will stop at nothing to make sure Fletch lives forever. Forever. <laughs> They don't shower much. This is Fletchcast. Thank you, Sammy, and welcome everybody to Fletchcast. I'm your host, Laker Jim. In case you haven't read the papers, the trailer is here. I don't read the paper. What's the spread in the game? What's the spread in the game tonight? Anybody know? Lakers by six. (laughs) Last week, the Confess Fletch trailer dropped. And ever since then, the boys and I have been secluded to our cabanas, cut off from the outside world, we canceled our annual urinalysis, and we have been digging deep into this trailer, searching for Easter eggs. Today, we emerged to give you our reactions and let you know what we've found. Well, I'm sure it's not for a lack of looking. Now, joining me as always, the following co-hosts have been approved for mature audiences (laughs) only, Jake and Big Bob. Boys, we needed this deep dive. For the upcoming movie. I think we needed a refresher course because, you know, we saw the kind of teaser trailer, what, over a month ago. But right. now we have a full-fledged trailer, a lot more to talk about. And who isn't excited? I've probably watched it over 20 times. And uh, each time I see it, it just keeps getting funnier and funnier. And definitely uh, reminds me more and more of Fletch every time I watch it. I'll be honest, the first time I saw it, I was like, okay, I think obviously expectations are off the chart. Um, but then when, as I continue to watch it, I was like, okay, yeah, I, I, I can get behind this. Bob, what was your first reaction when you saw it? Well, what a difference audio made. <laughs> yeah. First of all, you know, not having any, any, we, when we originally had our, our illicit copy that we had that we spoke about, you know, we had to do a lot of guesswork. Uh, now that we finally can hear what's being said and get context to, everything going on um there's a, like like jake said there's a lot of fletch in there uh from the fletch we know from from the previous movies we know i think a lot of the delivery that john Han gives as fletch uh just just in the little bit that we've seen really does have uh, a lot of similarity to the character we're used to but there there were some changes i guess would that would that be the right way to say it like your gym there were some changes last minute that we heard of yeah, well, we were definitely teased in the fact that Greg Mottola had let us know that the trailer was going to drop two weeks ago. Yes. So every day, we all text each other and said, today's the day. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> who's, who's checking this site? Who's checking that site? We wanted to hit it as soon as it was dropped. Come on, Google Alerts. Come on. And at the end of the day, we were just so disappointed it wasn't that day, but we had hope for the next day. Then we eventually reached out to Greg and said, hey, what's going on? And he said, listen, at the 11th hour, something had to be changed on the trailer. We didn't get clearance for something in the trailer to be released. So it's coming next week. Okay. At least we knew we didn't have to keep checking until the following week. And then finally, the day came when the trailer dropped. And like you guys, I was, I think I was anticipating it so much. I wasn't completely blown away when I first saw it, but but just like Jake, upon watching it and watching it and watching it, you pick up different things. You pick up how much John Hamm is acting like Fletch in the trailer. And listen, yeah. I think from certain reviews I've heard is, is not as funny as they hoped it would be and things like that. But I think like any movie we love, the more you watch it, the funnier it gets. Right. So all the little nuances, though, I think were there from what I saw. Yeah, and Jim and I actually watched it together. We did. And we were like, okay, here we go. <laughs> so we, I was sitting in my car, and I'm like, okay, here we go. Yep. And we watched it, and we were, at the end, we were just like, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, we were just like, Oh, you okay. mean when it first when it first <laughs> dropped? Yeah. Yeah, when it, when it first, the first time I watched it, I thought to myself, oh, man, like, uh, you know, because like we said, the, the expectations are, are ridiculously high for us. And I thought, oh, man, that was good, but I got to see it again. Now, I'm sure everybody has seen the trailer already, hopefully multiple times. If you haven't, stop this podcast, go watch it, and then come back. Because we're going to play the audio right now just to refresh people's memory of things that go on, things that are said, the dialogue that is used. So when we reference it in a little bit, it'll be fresh on your mind. 
Let's take a listen. Hi, right, Frank. Where are you right now? None of your business. Come on, Fletch. Aren't you bored? I need you for a story. I got that police report you wanted. I just emailed it to you. It's encrypted. Uh, what's the password? Go ask yourself. My father's paintings were stolen. The Picasso was appraised at $20 million. Well, it hardly seems worth stealing. You're not a detective. But I was an investigative reporter. It's an occupation that's been cheapened by the digital age, like president. Earl Maurice Fletcher. They caught me in the middle of a yawn. Can you imagine that? Who killed this young woman? I think the victim interrupted an art theft. Your fingerprints are on the murder weapon, and someone matching your description was seen with the victim. Come back with me to police headquarters. I get it. You want my help? Okay. Hey, guys, this is the way we can call in a coffee or a kill for a macchiato. Not literally. I looked into your criminal record. And? You're a bit of a shady character, Mr. Fletcher. <sighs> but I am adorable. If you did kill that girl, do the right thing and give me an exclusive. Let's talk about the suspects. Countess de Grazia married Papa for his money. Somehow she's involved. Oh. Flesh. She's trying to seduce me. Quite the collection of uh, impressionists you have here. Those are reproductions. That's how we introduce my children. Why did you lie to me? You're becoming paranoid. Maybe you should get a gun. Did you murder that girl? No, okay. no, I didn't. Did you? What is this? Woodbird and Bernstein? Almost. The idiot moron has something to do with this. You want me on the outside so I can solve this thing. Are you Fletcher? Yes, I am. Oh! I mean, no, I'm not. I always get that wrong. I don't know who people hate more. Cops or reporters. It's cops. So there you have it, the Confess Fletch trailer. Now, running time is 98 minutes. Ironically, the very first Fletch movie... Running time, 98 minutes. Perfect, yeah. One thing I noticed at the end of this trailer, which I had not noticed before, this one's rated R, which I was super excited to see. I'm excited about a rated R, Fletch. That being said, usually a rated R movie gets a rated R trailer, isn't that? A red band, yeah. Red band trailer, correct. So I wonder if that's ever going to drop. Yeah, often red band trailers are the extended trailers. They normally last longer than the original and very common. Um, and there are some websites that that specifically will only put out red band trailers. So I'll be on the lookout for that. I, I'm curious to see, like, 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 for instance, when he says the password is go after yourself, we know it's not going to be go after yourself for the movie. It's funny you bring that up because back in March, a listener, Jason Bilski, actually sent us a message about something he noticed. And I didn't realize how it fit in until now, but... When Greg Matola posted the image of the clapboard, the Confess Fletch clapboard, is probably the second thing he posted. It had a watermark on the bottom of it. And it backwards, it read, password, go fuck yourself. Completely spelled out. Yeah. And I thought that was like, oh, that's a pretty funny watermark. Not realizing how it could play into the actual movie. So it's funny that you say that because, yeah, if everybody goes back and looks at that, you'll see it. I wonder if the password is go fuck yourself in the movie. It's got to be. Yeah. But they would make a separate version for... Well, they have to make it for television. Yeah. But why Why even put that scene in? Why not just omit it? That's a good it? question. And put, yeah, some, and put something else in, you know? Yeah, because saying saying go F yourself isn't funny. It's not and as it's not funny gonna, as go fuck yourself. Yeah. It's not going to make you laugh. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question of why you put that in. I mean, initially... All of our thoughts were, okay, maybe they didn't have clearance for the theme song. And at the last minute, they had to add new music. Yeah, that's what we were hoping. <laughs> but I think as I watched this trailer, I realized it's probably a lot more than that. Wouldn't you guys agree? Yes. Definitely the music I agree with. I don't know what else you think it would be. What, what, are you, what were you thinking? Well, I, I will tell you, Matola said that, I mean, we can share this. Yeah, He absolutely. said that the music in the trailer is not the music that's in the movie. So that trailer music is just trailer music. That music will not be in the movie. And, you know, I've actually heard a couple of criticisms about the music. Oh, you know, it's silly. Or, you know, where's the Fletch theme? That's where I've seen a lot of the questions. Where's the Fletch theme? Where's the Fletch theme? He said the vibe of the trailer 
doesn't exactly match the vibe of the movie. Right. But he says it's close. Blake or Jim and I talked about this, but sometimes when you purchase music for a movie, you pu- you purchase it just for the movie itself. You're not uh, you're not purchased for the trailer because the trailer is a different animal. The trailer is going to be seen on multiple television stations. You'll see it in a lot of different places. So it's like, yeah, I said that it was okay to play the my music in your movie, but I didn't say it was okay to distribute it, you know, worldwide on your in your ad campaign. Right. So that's probably right. the difference, right. you know. Yeah, he says the trailer is not exactly the vibe of the movie, but it's not wildly misrepresentative. And I think that has to go back. I think it goes a lot with the R rating. Yeah, I think that has a lot to do with it. I think there's a lot of things, and I looked why it was rated R, and it was strong language drug use and i think there was like some sexual situations or something like that i think you're not talking about reds are you <laughs> talking about commies um <laughs> but that makes me more excited an r-rated fletch movie i mean that's gonna be fun yeah i think people will be surprised to remember that fletch was just a pg rating pg-13 had just come out the year before yeah. so in hindsight they probably should have given it the pg-13 mm-hmm. but uh no i just got the pg did they drop any f bombs in the original Fletch movies? Mm, not that I can think of. No, no. Not that I can think of either. Do we think that John Cocktoastin was enough to make the <laughs> That was probably close. The censors were probably a little nervous. About that. <laughs> Is Cocktoastin one of uh, George Carlin's seven dirty words? <laughs> yeah, yeah. George Carlin's dirty words. Yeah, it's one of the dirty words. Yeah. And then all I could think of was shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. I think for a PG-13 rating, you can say the F word maybe once or twice. And then if you say it more than that, I think you go into our category. Hey, hey, watch it. You're on thin ice, Larry. (laughs) Have you guys noticed, and maybe this is just me, but a lot more cursing is being let go on, on television now, right? Yeah. I had the same thought the other day with music. And I'm thinking... Because there's so many, because I was with a friend who had some younger kids and they were listening to music and there were some swear words in it. And the kids were a little younger and like, you know, my kid isn't, you know, she's in her mid teens and, you know, a lot of her, I mean, there's just so much more swearing. I guess it's just more accepted because of like, you know, if you watch cable television, there's so much more cussing aloud on cable and even in prime time. So I think you're right. Yeah, definitely the standards are a little looser. Yeah, I was watching the Impractical Jokers, which is kind of like a, like a family funny show, and they were dry, they were saying shit and other curses, and I was like, wow, not that I'm against it. No, you're definitely not. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But it, it, it's a little jarring when you're you're so used yeah, to not you don't expect it. it. Yeah. And there's one yeah. Fletch says shit. I think that's the only thing in the right. Shit, really? Which is funny. I think that's when he when he just kind of sighs. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, you guys want to watch this? Scene by scene. I'm Let's do it. Here, break yeah. it down. Okay. So the trailer starts off very much like the teaser that we had yeah. uh, originally. Fletch on his boat. But I think what grabbed me the first time I watched it and kind of gave me a little bit of goosebumps was the first time he was called Fletch. And it happens right off the bat. Yeah. Come on, Fletch. Aren't you bored? And it's John Slattery on the phone with him. And he says, Fletch. And, and I don't know why that just touched me in a really cool way. Liquor Jim, I, I had asked you earlier, I tasked you with a mission to, because your eyes are, you have the hawk eyes, but I, the, the name on yeah, the boat, the name I on couldn't the boat. figure out. So the name on the boat, you figured it out. I, I originally thought it was Italian, but when I actually put it through a translation, and it's either Spanish or Portuguese or a combination of both, but goodbye codfish. That clears that up. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wasn't that maybe that's a subtle reference to Fletch Lives? Oh, Jake. 113,000 from basketball. Listed as codfish. <laughs> I love it. Remember that? When they didn't, weren't they talking about cod in the beginning of Fletch Lives? Scrod's making a comeback, all right? Uh, it's Scrod, you're right. Scrod, but that's only small codfish. Yeah. So, so, still codfish. There's Frank. By the way, he kind of looks like Frank a little bit with the beard and the glasses, you know? I disagree. I, I'm going to say this. This is a, a definitely a different portrayal of, of Frank than the one that we've seen in the, the original movies. First of all, would you ever expect the Frank that we know to have his feet on a desk? I agree. It's a little bit more of like a uh, businessman, Frank. Okay. He's yeah. cleaned up. More right. professional. Yeah. Frank is usually high stress, looking disheveled, in a panic. Frustrated. <laughs> He's also drinking an expensive bottle of scotch, it looks like. So 
Yeah, it kind of portrays an image of a more of a different kind of Frank than we originally saw. You know, the Frank that needed new deodorant is not this Frank. So Frank is Frank is reaching out to Fletch and saying, "Hey, Fletch, aren't you bored? I need you for a story." So right. he sends Fletch some information about some story that he wants him to investigate. Now, Jake, in the Confess Fletch book, does does Fletch have a separate story at all that he's investigating other than the paintings? Well, he's his cover is he's working on the book on right. the paint the, the painter book, but no, not like an. There's no side story. investigation. No, uh, uh-uh. uh, no. I mean, he claims he's there in Boston to doing research on the painter for his book, but no. This is definitely something that was added for the movie. Yeah. So they cut away now, and you see an overview of a city, and that's definitely that's definitely Boston. That's definitely Boston. You can tell from the clock tower. You can tell from the Capitol building. There's an aquarium, and then there's Fletch at the laptop. I believe this is probably at the apartment that he's renting in in Boston. In Boston. Okay. So what do you think? What do you think's up with that aquarium? Because we see that aquarium a few times. Yeah. Anything to that? Close up of the fish. Close up of that little snake that's going around. What's Fletch eating there on the? Uh, it's like he's got some there. pizza, probably the night before. Yeah, it's probably it. Yeah, it looks like a slice of pizza. Oh yeah, look at that. Fletch has a MacBook. Unbelievable. And and Frank gives him the password that we had mentioned before to go f yourself password again. I, I Jake, I'm with you. Why give away this joke? It's an edited version of the joke. Yeah, just keep it. And then did you guys happen to pause it when the screen comes up right there? I was trying to read who the this arrest report was. Did you guys happen to my your eyes are better than mine. So here's what it says. It says Owen Tesserly. There you go. Of Boston, Massachusetts. I was trying to figure out what the crimes were. It says something about a class a class C assault and battery. M O L. I don't know if that's molesting a dead horse, but it could be. Hey, there's no crime in that. Remember, I thought we we established that. Right, you're right. I'm trying to cut down myself. Since Fletch is in the Boston area, this guy's in the Boston area. Frank needs him to uh, see what he can find out. I mean, first of all, Fletch's desktop is a complete mess. If you look beyond the uh, arrest, I saw that he has like tons of images saved on his like on his home screen. Oh, I didn't know that. Cowboy with D. <laughs> I don't know what that. <laughs> oh, I got a week. I got to go back and pause that. When do we Is see that it? the Goodwill app on the bottom? When do we see it? Oh man. Oh man. I'm just going to I'll be here all night. See it? Look at all those images that are saved. Yeah. Dillness, scan, <laughs> scan 01, scan 02. Maybe it's some of the images from the book he's doing on uh Edgar Arthur Thorpe Jr., the <laughs> cowboy painter. Because that's why he's supposedly in Boston. I wonder if they'll use that name. I hope they do. One does say cowboy with and then it's dot 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 D P N G. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there you go. Got a folder that says organized. Nothing's in it. <laughs> he was born in Boston. The uh, the painter that he supposedly is researching for a book. He's and this is a book that kind of follows him that he's working on throughout the the, the books themselves. Oh, okay. He finally writes it. It's mentioned in Son of Fletch that he finally wrote the book. I, I don't love the joke of go after yourself, but I like his reaction to the password. But I have a feeling that that's not the same. Like they, they cut that together, you know, like maybe the password go after yourself and the way he reacts to it aren't aren't the same. Like one doesn't follow the other. You know how sometimes they'll cut yeah. things together to make it funnier. I know what you mean. I do that with this podcast. I get that feeling. <laughs> anyway, we get the Miramax logo. All right. Then we see Fletch jump a fence. Fletch went, now, when Fletch jumps the fence, he's wearing the Laker hat. Well, that's what I wanted to get into. That's what I was th- Is that what you were thinking of, Jim, when we talked earlier? This Lake, Laker hat that he has been wearing in all the shots we've seen has now been covered up yeah. by a blue hat with no logo, no logo. on the front. It's like, it's like it's been erased. Erased from existence. So I wonder if that's what didn't have the clearance, ah. obviously. Something happened. I agree. And now, now he's no longer wearing the Laker hat. There are scenes, and I'll point it out when we get to it, where the Laker logo is blurred. Yeah, there's a few things blurred. It's blurred. It's distorted. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, he's w- no longer wearing the Laker hat. And coincidentally, the logos of this movie change from purple and gold to red and blue. So I wonder if we'll ever see the Lakers in this movie. Or maybe they're just saving it for a surprise. Surprise! Okay. Police, spread them. Okay, we see the painting. I'm guessing this is the Picasso that goes missing. Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, like, yeah. So this could be what. And then, like, then it, there, then he's he's in Rome with Andy. Right. Right. And Andy says that her father's twenty million dollar paintings have gone missing. And 
I think Ham hits us with yeah. the very first real flesh. Yeah, this is exactly. the first flesh delivery we get. The Picasso was appraised at $20 million. Well, it hardly seems worth stealing. <laughs> now, Andy is quite shocked by Fletch's reaction yeah. to the $20 million <laughs> thing. Stealing. Now, listen, somebody that's been dating Fletch, I, I know certainly anyone that's been dating me, if I were to say something sarcastic like this, they wouldn't even react anymore. You know what I mean? They just expect it from Fletch. They would. They just expect it from me. So I can't imagine she doesn't expect this type of thing from Fletch, but she's very shocked by this. And she raises her glasses and can't believe it. Yeah, she doesn't understand his sense of humor. Yeah. Now, if you pause it at the 31 second mark. Here we go. Yeah. Here's where you see the very first blurred see it, Laker yeah. logo. Right there. Yep. Right? Several times, so he's yeah. walking. It looks like he's walking in Boston somewhere. Yep. And yeah, right. Distortive for sure. You can see that the logo is blur is has a blur yeah. over it, and the hat has been changed from purple to blue. Yeah, when he's under the car, do you see that scene? Yeah, when he's looking under the car, very the very next scene. That's a new hat, right? Yeah, no, this is yeah. the Laker hat. That's definitely the, the Laker, Laker hat. Huh. Okay. Or maybe I should say, was once the Laker hat. Hmm. He's looking for something in like a wheel well, and underneath the car. I wonder what he's looking for. I mean, it can only be one of a few things. It could be keys, it could be a tracking device, or it could be a bomb, you know? Jake, right there, you see the Laker, like, almost see the Laker logo right, under it. Right, perfect, yeah. I think, I, I think this is going to be a surprise. I think this is, this is going to, they're, 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 there's no way they would go through all this trouble of having him a Laker hat and then saying, oh, we don't have clearance for that. Um, so I'm sure this is just going to be a surprise. Again, maybe clearance for the movie, but not for the trailer. Exactly. Fletch then goes on to address the fact that Every writer director who was going to revive this Fletch franchise was going to face this obstacle. The fact that journalistic newspaper reporters are not as important today as they were in the 1980s and the 1970s when the books were written. Uh, so he kind of addresses that front and center with Andy and then cracks a little joke. Let's take a listen. You're not a detective. But I was an investigative reporter. It's an occupation that's been cheapened by the digital age, like president. And I had to hear that twice to get it. Yeah. I had to hear it more than twice. <laughs> yeah, the way he delivers the word president, and I couldn't figure out what he was saying. I it's had hard. to think, oh, okay, what was that? Did he say present or president? And I was like, oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't alone on that. So this yeah. is our version of Flynn. So right, so now, now we cut to the scene where Flynn, <laughs> not Flynn, Roy Wood Jr., uh, <laughs> Monroe in the role of the Flynn type character Monroe, right, Bob? And uh, he's got Fletch's ID. And this is we've seen we saw this in the teaser trailer, uh, where John Hamm is making the weird face, which also matches his ID, you know. And once again, just hearing Fletch's full name for the first time in 33 years was just incredible. Earl Maurice Fletcher, they call me in the middle of a yard now. Now, notably, too, his driver's license number is, is blurred out here. Is blurred out, which is very yeah. That weird. was strange because it was not it blurred out on our teaser trailer. Was the address but, still there? Is the address there on the freeze frame? Yeah, yeah. The address is there, and I looked it, looked it up. I don't think it's a real address. Address seven. But here's a little Easter egg. This is the first one I noticed. Fletch's birthday is February fifteenth. Jake, who else's birthday is February fifteenth? I'm trying to think of it. Is it somebody that writes some books? <laughs> it's somebody that may have written a few books. Yeah, I think it's great that actually they kind of yeah. honored him with that, don't you think? Yeah, they honored Gregory McDonald by giving Fletch the same birthday as Greg. And uh, I guess it makes sense because when he was born, Fletch was born. So it was awesome. Nice tribute. Nice tribute to the maker. I wonder if that was intentional. I, it had to be. Yeah, yeah, I just don't think that's a coincidence. There's one additional I mean, uh, Easter egg in this license picture, too. It's an Easter egg from the movie Superbad. It's the little red dot, which is an organ donor. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I don't know if you remember in the movie Superbad, which was directed by the same director. What gets McLovin out of trouble when he's buying liquor oh, in a liquor yeah, store? Oh, yeah, that's right. You're an organ donor. <laughs> what? What? I didn't want to be one, but my wife insisted. I always give him shit for it, too. <laughs> I say it all the time. I say, say it's say. just like a woman. Even after you're dead, they want to tear your heart out. <laughs> That's another thing. I wonder if that'll come up in the movie. I wonder if there's any significance to the year 1971. Yeah, I was thinking of that, too. Oh, John Hamm was born in 71. So this makes him 51. Right. Again, a solid... 
25 years older than, you know, really how he is in the book, you know, late 20, mid late twenties. Chevy was 42 in the first Fletch. Uh, Four years later, he was 46. So if you're pretending this is in order with Fletch lives, then he's about five years older, you know, four or five years older. I wonder if they'll ever explain why he's in or how he got to Rome. If he just kind of took off. I think that's probably just what they said. They probably said he took off. In case anyone's wondering, Fletch is 6'1". Yeah. They w- that would have been a nice little Easter egg if they would have just made him 6'5 on the license. He is actually 6'5 with the Afro 6'9". Because <laughs> he does get uh, his height measured later in the trailer. And Fletch reveals that the, that the crazy look on his face is because they caught him in the middle of a yawn. And I think that his delivery, when it, what, what does he say after? They caught me in the middle of a yawn. You imagine that? Just imagine that. That's a very uh, Fletch delivery, too. Imagine that. Like, I was so surprised, you know? Then we see a pretty cool three panel shot that comes into frame of the dead girl's face, Fletch investigating the scene and like an overhead shot of her dead body, the whole body. The only thing of note here is this is the same shot that was in our teaser trailer, except the Fletch shot has been zoomed in a little so that you can't see the Laker hat where it was very visible when we watched it originally. Right. Now back to Monroe, snooping around a bit. There's a lot of people in the background. I, I'm, I'm assuming that those are probably the, all the CSI officers we see in IMDb on the credits. I don't think this is like, the, like he came in during the party, right? I'm assuming that this is all in the same place where the body was found. This is in uh, Bart Connors' apartment. Bart Connors, good call. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, Fletch couldn't be cooler in this situation. They're obviously looking at him as the number one suspect of this murder. And just like Chevy played it in the first movie. When there was any kind of danger, Fletch was not sweating it at all. Interesting what they said here, when, what Fletch said was he um, believes that she interrupted a art robbery. The woman who's the victim, I think, interrupted the art theft. Right. But that, again, that wasn't what happened in the book. It was a frame up for Fletch, but there was no art in that apartment that at least was talked to that wasn't a theory of his in the book that he that this woman interrupted a robbery one thing that does coincide with the book is the very next scene monroe says that fletch's fingerprints are on the murder weapon which is a bottle of alcohol right i think it was a whiskey bottle in the book he says also someone of your description was seen with the victim before they died and then he shows on his phone i guess some sort of security footage but again when the book was written there was no cell phone to show them if there were security systems that'd be a surprise the connection that flynn was trying to make is because she worked at the airport and so and then when fletch came in on the on that airline there was the chance you know that he had seen her at the airport i think that what they were trying to make a connection that way Mm, okay that's a good call yeah Yeah. but the date is what 7-eleven is that what it's saying july is that tcr i wonder if that's the uh date uh, July 11th. Oh, maybe, yeah. Now, they didn't do the greatest job of blurring out the lo- the Laker logo. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you're right. Now, they blurred it, but they did not cover it up. So, I just hope, number one, I hope that the Laker hat is in the movie. Wouldn't that be a huge disappointment? Ah, uh, it would be. And if it, if it is not, I hope they do a better job removing that in, with the CGI because this is a shoddy job of a yeah. oh it is yeah. well I think I think you're right I think that they probably didn't have permission for the trailer like you said Bob mm. and they probably wanted to get this trailer out right so they probably just yeah. hurried to blur it and get the trailer out yeah and, and the Laker logo would have appeared many times in this trailer yeah. so if that was uh, no bueno then uh, they probably made the right the right call just making a quick but again. Why not? Why not show that? Because the people that might have been a little bit more hesitant about it might be a little bit more convinced to, to watch it because yeah. at least he has yeah. a, a Lakers hat. On. I, I get the impression that they're right. being very ham, hamstrung. Is that the right word? <laughs> In terms of uh, uh, budget, and you know, if they could blur it out to save some money, they're going to do that. All right, I'll drop the hat thing. But if the Laker hat's not in there, then I are pissed. <laughs> anyway, the I'm next sorry. scene <laughs> is one of, is another great Fletch line coming from John Hamm here, where Monroe says to him, come back with me to police headquarters. I get it. You want my help? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was right, great. That delivery is awesome. That was funny. Now the next scene shows John Hamm in the police car. Now I don't know if he has handcuffs on. 
Does he? Does he have access to his Hard hands? To no, 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 he doesn't. He does not because he yeah, puts it up looks one like finger. with the way his jacket is, he could oh, be. No, he just put yeah. his finger yeah. up. Oh yeah, you're right. He did. Yeah, you're right. So this part, I didn't feel like this was very Fletch, except for the part that says not literally, <laughs> but like this could have been a good opportunity to, to ask about the Laker score or something like that. Like, hey, hey, you guys know the score of the Laker game? You know, anyone know how the Laker yeah. game ended? You know, like, you know, like that would have been a cool thing. Like, even as Fletch is being arrested for murder, he's asking about the, the score of the Laker game. You know, like I would have loved that little. That would have been a funny part uh, to put yeah. in here at this moment, but. They make a joke about a macchiato type of thing, which, you know, I feel like has been done to death. Hey, guys, let's see what we can call in a coffee or a chill for a macchiato. Not literally. Yeah, I think the Laker, I feel like your thing would have been funny. I think the three of us are constantly going to nitpick opportunities to uh, to put some sort of, of joke in. I mean, you know what a bit of funny line when you got in the car? Can we listen to the Beatles White Album? Oh, that would have been great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would have been a great line. That would have been funny. <laughs> All right. So now they're in the police station and... Monroe is grilling Fletch again. Fletch not affected at all by this murder questioning. I looked into your criminal record, and you're a bit of a shady character, Mr. Fletcher. But I am adorable. Now, looking into Fletch's past and seeing shady stuff, what do you think Monroe might have found? Anything that connected to the movie or the or a prior book, Jake? Anything you think of? Well, I think the biggest thing that kind of held that the fact that he had two ex-wives and he was failing to pay alimony. I think so, those are two of the biggest charges that really stood out. She was sleeping with everybody. You should have proved that in the court of law. My lawyer was a bum. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so Gillette obviously spilled the beans on all of that stuff uh, to Monroe. You may be right. Uh, but here again, we see Grizz, the reporter, kind of uh, seeming out of place to me. Now, listen, I don't want to speak for Grizz or the character, but I get the impression that at least if I were writing the character, that she would find Fletch charming and funny. Yeah. While Monroe does not find Fletch charming or funny. You know? Yeah. At least that's how I would have written the character. If not, then she's just probably just as equally as annoyed as uh, Betty from The Office. I'm not hungry. All right, forget the burger. How about just the in and out? Oh. <laughs> it could be one of two. It's, it's going to be one of those. So Grizz could be Grover because Flynn had his partner, Grover. So I guess this could be the female version of a Grover. Ah, there you go. Kevin Smith was on his podcast, Fat Man Beyond, last week. And he kind of backed up your point, Bob, about Fletch's irresistibility. I look forward to it. I, I think he'd be an amazing Fletch, man. He's closer. I mean, I'm not taking anything away from Chevy Chase. He was a great Fletch. But in the books, he's like this impossibly handsome guy that everybody wants to fuck. And that's <laughs> John Hamm to a fucking T. In fairness, everybody wanted to fuck Chevy's version too, at least in the movies. <laughs> All right, back to the trailer. The next scene has the social media of the victim. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I didn't pause this. So this was definitely the girl that was killed. Yeah, yeah. There's a big, there's a big clue here. When you pause it, yes, they show in the second uh, row of pictures in the middle picture, they show a blonde hair guy wearing a hat. And that's the guy, I'm pretty sure that's the guy that pulls a gun later in the trailer on Fletch. Yes, you're that's exactly it. right. So this is one thing that I missed when we were looking at the trailer uh, a few weeks ago was that this scene actually happens in the book that Fletch is at the apartment and that her ex-boyfriend comes and basically the, the, he's still under the impression that Fletch is the murderer and he pulls a gun on him and Fletch basically, you know, pulls a gun off away from him and, and sits him down. So that scene that we see later on, I think is a version of that. That was in the book. That's why we're investigative reporters. Yeah. Very good job guys. Then we see Frank and Fletch at the bar. Now this is a scene that happens in the book, just not with Frank. Yeah. Jack Saunders. Jack Saunders meets up with Fletch and they sort of have this discussion about the old times and, and about what's going on with Fletch. So Frank says to him, listen, if you killed her, do the right thing. Give me the story. Yeah, that's a that great line. Funny. Yeah, yeah I like that. Exclusive. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the suspects. Yeah, and then it says the Countess, and then we see another shot of Italy. And then back to her. With, this is a scene that we saw in the early trailer with her sitting in a beautiful landscaped field with the Count painting in the field. And they're blowing kisses to each other. 
Count fifty grazie, merit papà for his money. Somehow she's involved. Now the next scene we see is the, is Fletch getting in bed with the Countess. We know that in the book he sleeps with her. This I'm not sure is exactly that. He lays in bed, and as he kind of hits the pillow, she pops up from the bed and says, Fletch, she's trying to seduce me. Fletch, you're trying to seduce me, leading me to believe that they hadn't slept together up until that point. Yes, I, I believe this is the case, that that has not occurred yet, but we do know that it does. By the way, I just got some info from Greg Matola. Spoiler alert or just breaking? No, not really, but... He did confirm to us that February 15th was for Gregory's birthday. Uh, I think that's fantastic. There you go. Also, uh, we can, I can also say that he is not sure if there'll be another trailer or not to be determined. We're running out of time. Then we see Kyle McLaughlin, uh, who plays the art dealer, Haran, straight from the book, looking white-haired and pissed off. <laughs> he definitely looks like he knows he that Fletch is beneath him and he's irritated that he's having to talk to him. Would you agree? Definitely. And Fletch, who is a, you know, an art critic in the book and uh, writes on art, uh, com- compliments him on his artwork. And he says that they are replicas. Yeah. I love this line. I think it's a Chevy line too, or at least a fl- very Fletch line. Or the collection of impressionists you have here. Those are reproductions. That's how I introduce my children. <laughs> but it's funny. Now does Fletch have children? In this in this part of his life, no. I at this point okay. he didn't have children. Does Haran know who Fletch is at this point of the story, or is this like him showing up doing a? No, he just thinks he doesn't know what his true intentions are. He initially meets Haran because he tells Haran that he's interested in a painting. In fact, but the painting in question is one of the ones that belong uh-huh. to the count. So in theory, in this scene, there's potential that he might give a, an alias. It's possible, yeah. Let me check. I know that, I believe that he called himself yes. Peter Fletcher to... And Haran is actually, Haran. in the book, quite confused because he, he kind of says to Fletch, this could all be been done over the phone. You didn't really need to come see me in person. Uh-huh. Right. Well, if there was ever an opportunity in this movie to have a, an alias scene, this is it. <laughs> hopefully that line goes right over the art dealer's head. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully yeah, Haran yeah. doesn't even react to it, because then that's what makes it Fletch. You know, that's what makes it a Fletch smarter than you comment. Absolutely. So now we see the heiress. What's her name in the movie? Her name's Andy in the movie, and she's beautiful. She's preparing some sort of a meal for, for a dinner party, as we originally said. And then somebody says, did you lie to me? Why did you lie to me? But that's, that, that's actually in the background that's where we see fletch get knocked out by someone right yeah and i think this must occur at the same time that the gun is pulled on him as well i think both of those interactions happen in the same scene and now jake is that the countess at the dinner party do you see her right as fletch gets punched behind behind andy yes that's definitely her this didn't occur in the book is that the is that the fish tank that's what i was wondering too so this is this scene isn't where this scene is in Italy or Boston. Yeah, this is Bart Connor's apartment. Okay. This has to be Bart Connor's apartment because yep. the victim's boyfriend shows up at the same apartment, and I think this is in the same scene just a little bit later. Right, the boyfriend obviously wouldn't be in Italy. Right. So this is in Boston. Okay. Wow, what a spread. We mentioned that in the past, but now we get have, we have a high def version yeah. of the spread. Oh, no. yeah, it's so much clearer now. And that's a good call on the fish tank in the back, too. Now, right after that, Andy says to Fletch, with everything going on, you should have a gun. Maybe you should get that gun. Fletch looking at the gun like, ah, do I really need this? Sneaking around in the boat, he then slips, trips, and the gun falls right in the water, (laughs) which is a pretty funny scene. I I laughed at it a few times. Yeah, I think it's funny, too. And then the reaction of just him going, (laughs) sighing and going, shh. You're right. (laughs) That was good. Yeah. (laughs) Now, I do think Jake nailed this next scene. When we see the kitchen fire and the woman who seems to be oblivious to the fire, that, I believe, is the neighbor. It is. Yes. And Jake called that on the teaser trailer that we had no audio on. He nailed that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's the neighbor that's a bit of a drunk that lives across the hallway from Bart Connor's apartment. So she's on fire. (laughs) Did you murder that girl? Okay. No, I didn't. Did you? What is this? Wouldn't burn and burn 
Almost. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. They were a couple of journalists, I believe, investigative journalists. Yeah. And the burn steam relating to another fire joke. <laughs> so then we see multiple suspects. We see the suspects are... The Countess, Haran, Andy, and the neighbor. How are the neighbor a suspect? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Four suspects, but only one Fletch. <laughs> All right, so now we see the uh, mugshot of Fletch smiling ear to ear. And there we see he's probably about 6'1", maybe 6'2", depending yeah. on the angle of the photo. And depending on the afro, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> His hair definitely is giving him an extra range. I can tell you, you can definitely see that. I like I like uh, Monroe's line here. This What do you say? This stupid idiot or something like that. This stupid idiot moron has something to do with this. Oh, uh, that was funny. Uh, upon first couple watchings, I was like, oh, I don't want him to be thought of as like a bumbling idiot who can solve the crime. Yeah. But the more I watch it, I I lost that feeling. Yeah. Oh, I thought his badge is um, on the baby's uh, baby Bjorn. <laughs> <laughs> so this is kind of, if you guys remember in the book, Flynn has a ton of kids. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah. And Fletch goes, Fletch goes to his house and like he has a ton of kids and it's kind of funny that Monroe has a, has a kid here in his office. <laughs> and we find out what Monroe's first name is by the leadership award on the wall. Yes. Detective Morris Monroe. All right. Morris or Pierre. Exactly. <laughs> uh, that was great. In the next scene, we see Fletch pop up from the boat. We see a two dark shadowed men. Looks like Fletch gets kicked there in the dark there. Don't you think that's him getting beat up? Well, the movie, But you can clearly see who he's kicking, right? No, it looks like it's a just a, it looks like a pretty dark figure. You guys can't see who that is by the profile. Oh, now I yeah. can. Haran, that's what you're thinking. Yeah, Haran. Then maybe it's, maybe it's not Fletch fighting him then. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, or maybe this is the thief who's robbing Haran. Yeah, who's yeah. beating up Haran. All right, so we see the Vespa shot that we saw. We only see a little clip of it. We had a longer shot in the other version of the trailer. It looks like he's wearing the same suit that he was wearing when he was having lunch with Andy. So I would imagine he's probably driving to meet Andy at the restaurant. Okay. That That's a good call. And then he's walking either in the out art gallery or something again, or the hotel or something. And then, yeah, there's the boyfriend of the murder victim. That's definitely him. Okay. And Bob, you brought up a good point in the other episode that he definitely looks like he doesn't belong at this party. And this would make sense that he just showed up at this party because he wanted to confront Fletch. Yeah. Yeah, in the book, he lives in, like, D.C., I think, and he just, like, goes, comes straight to Boston to, like, you know, kill Fletch. He definitely thinks that you killed my girlfriend and now I'm going to kill you, that kind of situation, because Fletch is the number one suspect. In the very next scene, though, where they show everybody at the party with their hands up, you could definitely tell that that's, without a doubt, the Countess in that low-cut dress. Is this frame reversed? Yes. Because wasn't the Countess sit on, standing on yes, the right and side the fish and tank. the fish yeah. tank was on the yep. other without side? A doubt. Tank was, yeah. Without a doubt, it's reversed. Good call. And the gun is in the forefront. You could see a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely reversed. And and that, and that's the guy that punches Fletch, standing behind Andy. Yeah, the tall guy that's With standing his arms there right. in the back. And I don't know who that definitely is. Definitely the guy that punches Fletch, whoever that is. He asks Fletch. Are you Fletcher? Yes, I am. Oh. I mean, no, I'm not. I always get that wrong. And obviously, <laughs> it, it probably a call back to the tall guy asking him if he was Fletcher, and he probably got punched. Right. Now this is the second time. I bet you that's how it is. You're right. That is a good call. And then we finally get the uh, the movie title. And the logo looks like they kind of pulled it from the poster, that vintage kind yeah. of right. this book cover. Got a little bit of a distressed oh, look to red, it. white, and blue. Yeah. But different than the logo we saw in the teaser trailer where there was animation, we saw the word Fletch and Confess zoomed out of the... Mm -hmm. of Fletch. In this one, you just see it full screen, slight zoom coming towards it. And this is a, a very funny joke to end the trailer where he says, yeah. you know, I'm not sure who people hate more. I don't know who people hate more. Cops or reporters. It's cops. <laughs> this has to be the end of the movie. This has to be the ending, I bet, of the movie. Because he's kind of beat up. I bet you that's it. Yeah, absolutely. And then rated R... So see it in theaters, buy it on digital, September 16th, rated R, language, some sexual content, and drug use. There you go. So there is some sexual wow. content. Yeah. So we have been waiting so long for this, and we finally got it. Yeah, I think reviews are mixed. I think there's more positive reviews out there as far as what I've seen than negatives. You're always going to get the people that 
will not give it a chance because it's not Chevy Chase. And Mm -hmm. we fully understand that. We love Chevy Chase. We love Chevy's Fletch. We are in full agreement. That stands at the pinnacle of Fletch. But we ask that you be respectful to anybody that is excited about this movie, anyone that is open to the idea of John Hammond's Fletch, anyone excited who has been more of a book fan than a Chevy Chase fan. And I think for the most part, our fans on our social media have been respectful. Keep in mind that things were changed at the last minute. So to judge this movie solely on this trailer or solely on the fact that you, what you think John Hamm is going to do in the role is really not fair. Give it a chance. That's all I ask is give it a chance. If you hate it, you hate it. At least you give it a chance. Yeah. When, I, when I saw the trailer posted and I saw a lot of shares, there were a lot of people that were sharing it. And I think overwhelmingly those who had shared it were excited about it, were excited about Ham. It seemed like people were either excited about three things. One, that it was just a new Fletch movie. Two, that it was Ham. Three, that it was following another book, which some say is the best book, and it definitely is up there. I think we talked previously about source material and how great the first Fletch was, and that was based on a book. And this book is really good, too. So I think it has a lot going for it. Yeah. Just the fact, just the book itself is, is really well done. It's exciting. And if this turns out well, this could lead to so much more. And a lot of people in the comments uh, that I've seen have said, oh, how come they didn't get Ryan Reynolds? Yeah. And to those people that those people that keep asking that question, he doesn't want to do it. He was. Yeah, he turned it down. He was approached and he turned it yeah. down. He said he, right. he, he out of respect for Chevy and, and, and the role. He didn't want to do it. And, you know, if he turned it down, that's on him. That's not that, you know. Yeah, he would have been great. But I'm curious if people, you know, like when there was a new bond. And people are like, oh, you know, uh, Sean Connery's my my James Bond. But it seems like eventually all these people saw the movie. And I think I think for probably a lot of those people, they were swayed when Roger Moore became Bond or, you know, that short time that Timothy Dalton yeah. was Brosnan and, yeah. and, uh, and Daniel Craig. Um, and, and again, those versions are different. If you look at Daniel Craig's James Bond compared to like a freaking early 80s Roger Moore James Bond, they're totally right. different. They're almost to the point like Moonraker. I mean, it's almost campy compared to like a very serious, like no time to die. The tone has changed. But the essence of the character is still there and he's still embraced. So why can't we do this for Fletch? Yeah, right. Why does it have to be this one version of it? Why can't it be a new version of it and still people... Can be excited. Well, I think about it, it can be, and I think that you know having an open mind about it is is the key. And yeah, if, if you're gonna like Laker Jim said, if you're gonna just ahead of time say no, he's not my Fletch. Okay, that, that's okay if you feel that way. But you know, the rest of us are gonna probably enjoy this and uh, hopefully enjoy a lot more. Yeah, and I think it's the generation that you grow up with. It, it's who's in the role when you no, no. are exclusive yeah. to the movie. Um, is same thing with Star Wars. And I think that goes with anything with Batman, with James mm-hmm. Bond. You know, Michael Keaton is my Batman because same. when I was young, that's when the 89 Batman came out and it was everywhere. But it doesn't mean I can't enjoy it because I do the other Batmans mm-hmm. that have come, you know, after Because him. you like that character. Yeah. And, you, you know, and, and I think you have, people have the right to make a different interpretation yeah. of it. And most of the time it is embraced. Or just respect it as just another interpretation of it. Right. Right. And, and and you just brought up a great point. It's like you either love Fletch because you're a Chevy Chase fan. Yes. Or you're a Fletch fan. If you just like it because Chevy is amazing in it and arguably it's his greatest role and his finest performance, then you might not like this film, you know, because it's not Chevy Chase. And that that's what makes you like the other movie but if you actually love the character that he plays and you respect everything that chevy brought to the character and added to the character then you should be excited about what john ham and greg matola could bring to the character as well because in the 80s book fans had to be open to chevy's interpretation as well of course i mean it's been 20 years i mean (laughs) we're just a couple of weeks away i mean it's yep been over 20 yeah it's been right around 20 years today today we are 19 days away from 
the movie. And then when you guys hear this, it'll be even less, probably two weeks away. Yeah. But that's exciting. It's coming quick now. I mean, you can go ahead and pre-order it um, if yeah. you're not going to see it in the theater. And a Fletch fan, actually, William Bevel, um, messaged us and said that they're actually selling the novel Confess Fletch with the poster art from the movie Confess Fletch. So if you go on yeah. Amazon, you can see that it's available on Kindle now. And I believe it's available for paper on paperback soon. Uh, but there are yeah, no pre order, but it doesn't give a date of release yet. But I've already ordered it because there's no <laughs> way I'm, I'm letting that get away from me. you know. And and who knows what young reader who loves mystery novels is going to approach a bookshelf, see John Hamm, say, This is a book, this movie is a book, and then the little Jake. And the little John Hams that are out there right now will rediscover Fletch in this way, the same way you guys did with the Chevy cover yeah. on the original novel. You're right. You're right. I just can't believe that we've waited all this time. <laughs> it, it almost just seems surreal. It, it almost does. just doesn't seem yeah. like it's, it's really happening because it's just so many false starts and, and just so many disappointments that we're finally only a couple of weeks away and I have to curb my expectations just because uh, I learned my lesson after the last Indiana Jones that was <laughs> so long after Christmas yeah I, and I went into Crystal I learned Skull. my lesson and I will tell you that I do like Crystal Skull now much more than when I first saw it but I'm just going to go in with an open mind and just say hey I love this book it's it's going to be awesome and if they have some you know winks and nods to the original movies that's good hey there's the Lakers set oh wow there's the theme that's awesome I think that would only enhance There's the music. Yeah, that would only yeah. enhance it. Guys and girls, I want you to all stop what you're doing and go watch the trailer one more time. Do me a favor. And then when you're done with that, open up your podcast app and search for Back to the Future, the podcast. That's right. Yeah. The Fletchcast boys, Jake, Bob, and myself were guests on episode 100. The 100th episode, we spoke to Brad Gilmore about all things Fletch, all things Back to the Future, and we covered everything else in 1985. It was an absolute blast. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. If you love the movie, Back to the Future, the podcast is for you. All right, boys, that about sums it up for episode one of season three. For Jake and Bob, I'm Laker Jim. We'll see you at the movie September 16th. If we get this old one Buick up to 88, Gillette's going to see some serious shit. See you, boys. Later, guys. Later, boys. Bye. I expect to hear from my lawyer. Bye.